going on everybody we are back after a nice weekend off we've got an eight game monday slate which aside from the weather i'm kind of excited about it's like the perfect amount of games for me uh i said the exact same thing on the night shift podcast so congrats if you listen to both you're hearing me say the same stuff jake how was your weekend i was good didn't play a ton of dfs but uh, i was good some time with the family which is always nice and yeah hope you guys had a good mother's day um yeah this slate is pretty good actually a lot of good pitching options some hitting i really like uh it'll be fun to talk about get back into the swing of things here yeah weekend was good i didn't play a single dime on saturday or sunday uh had anniversary playing saturday and then yesterday was just spent sort of relaxing from that i had a big car ride home so yeah, I'm excited to play. It's been two days, so I'm starting to get that. I'm starting to fiend for it. I need to get my fix. <laughs> yeah, me too. Right, let's dig in. Uh, first game up, Royals and Rays. Uh, Royals, 4.6 run implied total. Rays, 4.4. It's a 53% chance to win for the Royals. Eric Scoglin going for Kansas City. Ryan Yarbrough going for Tampa. Uh, I'm not looking at either of these guys really from a pitching standpoint. Although, you know, there's no although. Uh, I don't. I don't really want either of these guys. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. Uh, I want to target bats against both of them. And even though I don't really like playing the Rays or the Royals bats in general, I think that there are a few players that um, that I like here. So for Kansas City bats against Yarbrough. Solaire is just a completely different player against left-handed pitching. He's in the top like 15 in average exit velocity against lefties this year. Salvador Perez has been hitting lefties well since returning from injury. Um, I even like Merrifield if he leads off. So a few of these. Like Scoglin is just getting lit up by both sides of the plate. I think he's one of the worst pitchers on the slate. I agree. Um, like, he just does not grade out well for me at all. So, really, all the righties for the Rays. Uh, Ramos, Robertson, uh, Echeverria is a decent punt, I think, on DK for 2,900. CJ Cron and Gomez at the top. Like, give me all these bats on both sides. Um, not a lot of respect for either pitcher. Yeah, I like the Rays bats quite a bit. They popped up mm -hmm. for me on FanDuel a lot. Um, so, Gomes, Cron... Duffy, Wilson Ramos. Um, I think, yeah, Hechevarria is fine. Uh, you know, if you're trying to fill out a shortstop at a sub-3,000 price, you know, that's a good bargain as part of a, a stack. No one on FanDuel more expensive than 3400 So, uh, you know, the, a raised stack is basically just a conduit to being able to use Corbin, Carrasco, and whatever other stack you want. Um they're just they're super super cheap they won't stop you from being able to do anything at all so i have no problems with the Rays stack uh i don't expect a ton of ownership on them either they're not the like sexiest stack in the world and then the royals um like Soler and perez would be my focus i don't have as much interest in the royal side of it kind of weird to me but i think it's just more pricing than anything else yeah, the pricing is definitely better, I think, on both sides for the Rays than the Royals. Yeah. So if you're looking to pay up at one or, you know, go with one of the top guys and then a mid-tier pitcher, this Rays stack is um, – that's going to allow you to do a lot with the rest of your roster on both sides. Um, so I like it a lot. Keep an eye on weather here. I touched on it a little bit in the night shift, but – there's definitely some rain possibilities at the time that they would be starting. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say that a delay during the game is probably likely. It doesn't strike me as a full postponed game, but this one might take a while. So the good news is uh, you shouldn't be playing any of the pitching in here, so it, it probably won't matter. But you do want to keep an eye on that just in case you are mm -hmm. going and getting some exposure to the Royals or the Rays. Um, game might be a little wet. Yep. Alrighty, Tigers and Indians. Tigers 3.4 run implied total. Indians five. Uh, it's a 32% chance to win for the Tigers. Mike Fires going for Detroit. Carlos Carrasco going for Cleveland. Uh, I love all things Cleveland here. 
Uh, this is going to be another one where weather is going to be potentially an issue. Similar story to the Royals Rays now where it looks like it's just going to be wet the entire time. Uh, it's going to be one that I pay attention to quite a bit because I like Carlos Carrasco uh, a ton here. I'd say he's probably my favorite pitcher of the slate. And uh, I think the Indian stack, bats-wise, is the best stack of the day. So the weather in this game is very, very important to me. Yeah, uh, definitely for pitching, you want to keep an eye on this. Carrasco should be a pretty popular option, I think. A little bit of a discount off of Corbin on DK. And then what are their prices? Yeah, so a little bit of a discount on both sites, um, but in the same price range. Um I don't love his strikeout upside here. Like, the Tigers have been okay against righties this year. Yeah. And um, 42% hard contact against righties this year for the Tigers. Like, that was really surprising to me. It's a little um, scary. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I'm just, I'm not crazy about the matchup for Carrasco. Um, I'm not targeting bats against him. And then I think the weather's going to be enough to push me off of him a little bit. Um, so, it, I mean, Carrasco's a fine play, especially if the weather clears up. But I'm more focused on the Indians' bats, one through six. Fires is just getting teed off against lefties especially. And then you start the lineup with Lindor, Ramirez. You got Alonzo and Brantley in there. Kipnis is fine as well. Um, this Indian stack... Probably my favorite on the night. Yeah, it's it's one of those I'm going to have to pay attention to pretty heavily. Um, yeah. And I definitely want to pay attention to our projected ownership for Carrasco because if people shy away from him, then I definitely do want to be over the field on him because of how much I think that he – like I like where he's at and his price point. So yep. if his ownership can get deflated from the weather, uh, I might look to go the other direction. Indian stack is just absolutely phenomenal. Both sites, um, Lindor, Brantley, Ramirez, Encarnacion, Alonzo. Kipnis is 2700 on FanDuel. No problems there. I mentioned Greg Allen in the uh, spotlight stacks. He's only uh, $2,000 minimum salary on FanDuel. So as part of a stack, when you can get an outfielder uh, at the minimum amount, uh, I'm always a big fan of having that, especially if I'm going to have like the rest of the team. So... He'll be a nice differentiator for some of my stacks at a price point that won't affect a single thing that I do for the rest of yeah. the uh, the line. I like it all. Um, uh, I'll, I'm going to end up with more Indians than any other team, barring any weather changes, and I yeah. won't have anything from the Tigers. I'm I'm right there with you. I'm not targeting against Carrasco. Um, he just misses too many bats. He can get wild, but I don't really think the Tigers are going to take advantage of him here. I think Carrasco probably pitches fine. I'm just a little bit worried about the overall strikeout upside compared to a guy like Corbin. Tigers have the lowest walk rate in the league against righties, so I have a sneaky suspicion he might be able to go deeper into this game than normal. Yeah, I mean, that very well could be. There's numbers that point to both sides here now that I'm looking at that as well. Yeah. So. Yeah, uh, so that's where I'm at. Everything that's on, everything that the Indians start with today, I think is available to be played in heavy, heavy rotation. Mm -hmm. Lovely Indians. Uh, Red Sox and A's. Red Sox, 5.1 run implied total. A's, 4.2. It's a 59% chance to win for the Red Sox. Rick Porcello going for Boston. Sean Maniah going for Oakland. Uh, not really looking at either of these guys. Um, this feels like more of a hitting game than anything else, but I don't even have too much of the Red Sox. They're just they're just so expensive. But, you know, I'll have some exposure to them without question. But more most of this game is like a stay away for me. Yeah, me too. I'm like you see like the five run total for the Red Sox, but Manaya just threw a no hitter against this team like a month ago so it, it's tough to recommend playing Manaya in Boston against a team with a five run total and I don't think he's that great of a value but I also don't want to target against him heavily he, I think he's got some regression coming against right handed hitters um, when you look at some of the expected stuff compared to his actual results with the uh, 
average, average exit velocity and stuff. Um, I think you can go with like Mookie or JD or Hanley, but I'm not stacking against Manaya here. No. And then Porcello on the other side. He, I just don't think he's a 10-5 pitcher and no. not against an A's team that I have respect for, especially in a pretty decent hitter's part. So I just can't do it with Porcello when there's – like I'd rather take a chance on McCullers in a bad matchup than go with Porcello for 10-5. Yeah, I, I don't expect to have anything other than like a flyer lineup of either of these pitchers. Um, I don't mind a Red Sox stack all that much. Like you're you're obviously paying up for it if you go bets Ramirez Martinez Bogarts. Hmm. Um, I don't mind having it. I'll have a little bit of that just because of their run total. It'll be hard to avoid it completely, but they're not a priority for me at all. Uh, bets though popped up quite a bit um, on my crunches. I know he's crazy expensive, but just getting that 5.1 implied total lead off spot righty lefty matchup. He's checking yeah. off all the boxes for, you know, things you would normally look at. So, if you've got like a raise stack with, you know, relatively cheap pitching, um, you can get to Mookie Betts as a one-off pretty easily, and he'll be better than most one-off options you'll ever find. So, yeah, um, never, <clears throat> never a problem playing Mookie Betts. Like, yeah, even for fifty-eight hundred, if you've got one slot left. Um, him and Trout are really the only guys that get priced there now, which I think is good that DK is doing that. Um, I'm sure they're priced up huge on FanDuel too. Yeah, yeah that's five, five, five k, five thousand right now. Yeah, so um, he will be pretty contrarian. I don't think he'll be highly owned against Manaya because people know that Manaya is a good pitcher now, and they'll probably be scared to target against him after that no hitter against the Red Sox. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm just not in love with this game overall. I think a bat or two on each side, like Matt Olson against Corsa. Also, not looking to stack there. I'm with you. Let's move on to Twins and Mariners. Uh, Twins 4.7 run implied total. Mariners 4.5. It's a 52% chance to win for the Twins. Uh, Jake Odorizzi going for Minnesota, Wade LeBlanc going for Seattle. Uh, not looking at any of the pitching here. Um, you know, if you want to get super, super weird and take Wade LeBlanc on DraftKings because he's 4,000, uh, you know, that's not something I would want to do, but it won't take a lot to return much um, on that price point. Don't recommend more than like one or two lines in 150, though. It's. It's a low ownership move. Generally speaking, I'm all bad <clears throat> in this game. Yeah, I'm not in love with this game really on either side either. Um, so LeBlanc, he's nothing special to me. He's not a guy that's going to miss really any bats. The Twins are sort of so-so against lefties. Um, maybe a little bit below average actually because they've got all these lefties in the lineup like Kepler and Rosario and Maurer. Um so I don't think I'm looking to play LeBlanc. And then for Minnesota bats, I was going up and down the lineup. I can see going with uh, Dozier, of course, for 4,500, and then maybe Escobar, switch hitter, dual position eligibility, but he's 4,400. Like, I don't know. I'm not really on a bunch of these Twins bats. And then Oda Rizzi, I'm just not into targeting pitchers against the Mariners. There's very few strikeouts in their lineup. Uh, he's given up 35% hard contact to lefties. Uh, do you have Cano out of the lineup? Yeah, I, I must have missed. Okay. Yeah, so I, I figured he was injured. I didn't look it up, but. Yeah, he got, uh, he got hit on the, he got hit so by a pitch he... and broke his hand. Okay, that was yesterday. So at least it wasn't like Friday and I'm just completely missing out. <laughs> no, um, no, it just happened. Okay. Yeah, he'll be out for So, a yeah, he'll be out. Uh, that is a little bit of a boost for Odorizzi, but not enough for me to get on to him at 7,100. There's guys that are near his price range on DK that I prefer a lot more. Don't um, forget, Odorizzi, big-time reverse splits. Yeah, this year, he's giving up a lot more hard contact to lefties. He's kind of evened out his splits. I don't know if that's going to if that's gonna stick. Okay. Um, I, I think he did make some adjust, adjustments in some of the pitches he was throwing, so that might have something to do with it. Um, like, he's striking out a lot more righties a lot less lefties and more hard contact to lefties. So 
it could just be variants. Like he may go back to being the same pitcher as we've seen. Uh, but actually, I do like the righties, uh, Hanniger and Cruz. Those are the two guys. And then Seager, I think you can target against him as well. Yeah, Mariners are uh, one of my stacks today. Um, Nelson Cruz, spotlight hitter, uh, reverse like splits. You know, if that holds up, I like Cruz in that scenario, particularly at his price point. Um, just as easily could have been Kyle Seager. I like the first four guys here a ton. Um, I like Hanniger a little bit more on DK than I do on FanDuel. And then uh, I think Zanino looks pretty nice at 3,500 if you need a catcher as part of your stack. Uh, the Mariners are going to be probably my second, like, most popular stack behind the Indians. Um, only thing is, again, weather issues. Mm. Uh, could see rain early in the game, so there might be a delayed start. I don't think it'll matter too much, but, you know, you do. it's another one of those games where we want to keep an eye on it. And yeah. for the Twins, I love Dozier. Uh, I think he's in a really, really nice spot. Um, I wish that Escobar and Rosario had slightly better pricing. Um, I don't mind having Maurer and Kepler. You know, they're going to be a stack that's not very highly owned because of all those lefty bats. Uh, I expect Dozier to be popular as a one-off, though. Yeah, agreed. Um, Dozier is my main target for the Twins. And then you said it best. Like, the, the pricing just isn't all that great. Um, and then you got these lefties mixed in. I don't know. It's a big enough slate where I don't think you have to get crazy with lefty lefty matchups. Agreed. Agreed completely. All righty. Diamondbacks and Brewers. Diamondbacks. Four point five run implied total. Brewers three point eight. It's a fifty eight percent chance to win for the Diamondbacks. Pat Corbin going for Arizona. Uh, Junior Guerra going for Milwaukee. Not really looking at Guerra all that much. Um, Corbin's a guy I'll have some ownership to. I should probably have a little bit more than whatever it is. Uh, he looks fine. At twelve seven is a pretty healthy price point on DraftKings. Um, Brewers three point eight run implied total. Not like crazy low. I would have hoped to see that be a little bit lower. You know, somewhere in the. Like, even though just those two-tenths of a run for the Tigers or the Angels, it, Tigers four-tenths of a run below, um, that's really big from a scoring perspective. So Corbin won't be the guy I have the most of from the high end. I am assuming that'll be the opposite for you. Yeah, he's my pay-up option. Um, I just love what he's done so far as far as, like, missing bats and just, like, plate discipline stuff. 15% swinging strike rate. Uh, second highest wist per swing percentage behind only Max Scherzer, which is pretty good if you're missing bats at the same rate as Max Scherzer. Yeah. Um, like the like the Brewers could certainly pose some problems for him. It's good hitting weather. I don't know if they'll have the dome closed. I hope they do because it's 91 degrees and that would bump down Corbin a little bit for me. Uh, like Braun and Lorenzo Cain, I'm a little bit worried of, but Corbin's just been. Like one of the absolute best pitchers in the MLB so far this year. Yeah. So I can't really, yeah, I can't really argue with the numbers. Um, his breaking ball is just making everyone look silly, and it doesn't look like anybody's figured him out yet. So I, I think he just keeps rolling here. I'm only worried about those two bats, really, Braun and Kane, because they don't strike out a lot and they hit lefties very hard. So. Hoping he can limit the damage against them, uh, and I think he can mow through the rest of this lineup pretty easily. So yeah. I'm all over Corbin. Yeah. Corbin has the sixth lowest xFIP among starters this year. He's just he's just been really really good. Yeah. Uh, I have no ability to say like no to any of that stuff. Everything that he's been doing has been great. Um, he looks like a really solid option. He's just not like, like I'm just going to prefer Carrasco, barring any uh, weird ownership numbers. Um, I'm anxious to see what we project his fan duel ownership at. Uh, that'll drive a lot of what I'm doing from a pitching perspective, just sort of seeing where I come out at it naturally and my comparison point. Because if it's close, I won't touch it and it'll be fine. But if he's oddly high or oddly low, it'll really change the way all of my lines get structured. 
Yep. And I really don't have like a good feel for it. I think he's gonna be like really highly owned. You think? I don't. <clears throat> I don't get the sense that like Carrasco will be. And um. Then, I don't yeah. think Porcello will be, so then it's basically just how high do I think McCullers will be on FanDuel, and I don't see that being terribly high, so I, I'm naturally just getting to people going to a lot of Corbin, which if that's the case, I'm just not going to have that much. Yeah, I think Carrasco will get some ownership depending on the weather. There's a bunch of righties in that Tigers lineup. Um, Corbin will be popular for sure. The mo- the Highest price pitcher is usually pretty popular in most slates. Yeah. Um, this isn't like a crazy bad slate. There's no cores where you want to pay up everywhere. Um, so Corbin will probably be the highest owned pitcher, I would think. Um, I'm not like Carrasco could challenge him, but yeah, you're, you're probably right. Corbin's probably the highest owned pitcher of the night. Um, do you, you said you don't have any interest in Guerra. Uh, definitely not on FanDuel. On DK, I'm not a ton. 4.5 run implied total for the D-backs is a bit higher than I would like to go to grab that second guy. I would much rather grab Chris Stratton. Yeah, he's, I mean, so it's it's a price thing for Garrett and an ownership thing. I do have some interest in him for 6000 against the Diamondbacks who... I mean, yeah, they've got some power, but they also have a bunch of strikeouts in the lineup. Guerra is missing bats at a better rate. Uh, 31% whips per swing in his first two starts in May is encouraging. He's going to go 100 pitches if he's pitching well. Um, like His splitter has been pretty good. Slider's been pretty good as well. And it's just a, a pretty decent matchup, so... I mean, I'm not crazy in love with Guerra. I don't even know if he'll make the spotlight pitchers, but he's, um, I think he's a pretty solid option, and he's been a lot better. Yeah, uh, I, normally I would be in. It's just a little bit too big of a gap in runs for me. Yeah. That's fair. Especially with Stratton being $300 cheaper. Uh, mm-hmm. I just think that he looks like a significantly better second option with a lot less risk. Yep, that's fair. Um, so we didn't talk about hitters. Uh, I really like the Diamondbacks, so I guess that's another point uh, in the opposite direction for Guerra for me. Uh, Peralta and Descalza, uh, this is, and both sites too. Um, I, I think it's just really low price points. Goldschmidt is thirty seven hundred on Fanduel. Like I know that it's not going well for him, but I'll ride that train for a while. Uh, I like Peralta and Descalso at the top of the order. Only three thousand twenty six hundred. Um, Steven Souza only 2,200 hitting fifth. Uh, Marte hitting sixth. Again, only 2,200. Um, Alex Avila, catcher option 2,500 on DraftKings. They just have a lot of really low prices that allow you to do sort of whatever you want. Yeah, I mean, I get the, the Dimeback stack. I don't think Guerra's untouchable or anything. Um, and it's really, it's Descalso and Peralta and Goldschmidt. Um, they're just priced very nicely on both sites. Avila is 2500 on DK. Um, I, could, I could get to it, but I do have some respect for what Garrett's done lately, so I'll probably be mostly off Diamondbacks bats. Yeah, that's fair. They, they look significantly better on FanDuel. Like guys like mm-hmm. Souza is 2200 on FanDuel, 3800 on DraftKings. That's just... <laughs> It's a crazy gap in price. Yeah. When you get guys that are hitting fifth, 2,200, you know, decently high implied total, sometimes it just it, it takes over as part of a stack. I don't right. have anything else here. Uh, I'm not really looking at the Brewers outside of uh, Kane and Braun, and if yep. then that would just be one-off stuff. Yep, me too. All righty. Angels and Astros. Angels 3.6 run implied total. Astros 4.1, uh, 56% chance to win for the Strohs. Andrew Heaney going for the Angels. Lance McCullers going for Houston. Uh, big big McCullers fan. Um, he'll be the guy that I have probably second most when all is said and done. Um, just 
Love his K upside, even against the Angels. Lots of righty bats against him. Uh, I'm willing to take that chance that he can just keep mowing them down. And then for Heaney, not a guy that I'm paying too much attention to, although I do like him. Just doesn't feel like the right day for him. Yeah, Heaney, I mean, I could talk myself into playing Heaney on a different slate in the same matchup. Yeah. I, I don't think I'll get to it today. Um, but Heaney's been really good, like surprisingly good. Yeah, I'm a fan. They're just, yeah, they're just guys in his range that I like better. Um, good job limiting hard contact and stuff. So just enough for me to not full stack against a lefty, which I would be looking to do with the Astros normally. Um, the Astros are squaring the ball up really well, though. So like a bunch of their guys are in the top like 100 in average exit velocity over the past few weeks. So that's a little bit concerning if this team gets hot. They can just crush anyone. Um, I don't. I just don't love the matchup for McCullers. It, it's a good price, but the Angels are the third best team against right-handed pitching this year. At least that's what I have them in my rankings, under 20% K rate. Yep. Uh, the ISO's up there, hard contact's up there. And there's just not easy outs in this lineup at all. Like Valbuena will swing and miss a ton. Um but he's still got power. There's just a lot of good hitters in this lineup. Um, I'm thinking the price on DK for McCullers will increase his ownership, um, but I don't think I'm going there. I mean, I, I get it. The The numbers from this year don't uh, make McCullers look like a nice option. Uh, it's another one where things are going to get adjusted for me based on where that original pass of ownership comes out because I could see him being decently owned on FanDuel because of his price. I could see him being hardly owned because of the matchup. So a lot of that, those top three guys, the Corbin, Carrasco, McCullers, uh, those three will get adjusted for me based on where everyone else is at just to sort of maximize that on my end. Um, I like McCullers. I'm nervous about uh, the stats from this year. But at the same time, you know, if I'm going to target McCullers, I do want to target it when it's one through five righties. You know, no uh, no Otani in the lineup. Like, I'm, I feel like I'm getting the best possible Angels lineup outside of, you know, Trout and Upton being hurt. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. Like, Upton's hitting better now, and Trout's Trout. <laughs> and then, like, Simmons doesn't strike out against either hand. It's just going to be a lot of tough outs for McCullers. Yeah. So I can see him getting into a little bit of trouble and just not having a lot of strikeouts here. So I'm, I'm worried about his matchup. That's it. I'm not worried about McCullers. But not a good matchup at all. No, not so much. Um, yeah, it's, it's got me a little nervous, that's for sure. I'm hoping a lot of people are nervous and I can just feel comfortable getting like slightly more than the field, but it's still a low number. Right. And so this is like, like not to plug our stuff, but you should check out the ownership projections for McCullers tonight. Cause if he's going to be like 10% owned or if he's somehow like 5% owned and no one's going to play him, that's where I'd want to take a shot on him. If he's going to be 20, 25, just because of his price on DK, then I'm I'm not into that at all. Like he's the type of pitcher that can mow down a lineup and just get really hot and strike out everyone. Yeah. Um, it wouldn't be surprising if McCullers was the highest scoring pitcher on this slate. Like I wouldn't say he's the most likely. Right. But he's a guy with electricity he's, in his arm that can do something like that. And if he's going to exactly. be seven yeah. percent owned, that's an inefficiency. I completely agree. Yeah. If he's twenty five percent owned it's a it's a way different story <laughs> that's when you should I, be looking at someone else yeah 100 percent agree that's that's good analysis one of i would guess one of carrasco <laughs> or mccullers is probably like gonna be lower than i would expect and yep. i'll probably be higher on whoever that is mm -hmm. basically that's the easiest way i can explain it it's a good call on the ownership um, uh, well, just to touch on it quick, I'd go Springer, Altuve, Correa, Gurriel, Bregman as a stack on DK and be okay with it. Yeah, I, I get it. It's just the, like, like I do respect what Heaney's done, but 
looking up the average exit velocity for all these guys, Correa, Guriel, Springer, Gaddis, they're all hitting lefties very well. And this is a team that like, should scare you with all these right-handed bats against the lefty. Um, another team that's just not a lot of easy outs, especially for a lefty. So, yeah. It's a weird game. Yeah. Padres and Rockies. Padres, 3.4 run implied total. Rockies, also 3.4. Due to rounding, we get Padres, 51% chance to win. Uh, Joey Lucchesi going for San Diego. Tyler Anderson going for Colorado. Um, I have a little bit of interest in, I guess, both of these guys. Uh, Tyler Anderson, a little bit more on FanDuel. He's $1,400 cheaper than Lucchesi. It's only $600 cheaper, and they're back-to-back -back on each other on DK. So... They're not, like, guys I would normally target, but a game in Petco, very low implied total for both teams. Neither team with, a, like, a particularly vibrant offense. Um, I, I get it. You know, they, they deserve small amounts of ownership. Man, I, th I like both of these guys. Uh, these are, like, my two favorite mid-tier options on DK. They're right next to each other, I think. Yep. Um, so 7,500 and 8,100 for Lucchesi. Um, Anderson has impressed me, 13.6% swinging strike rate. He's top 30 in whiffs for swing. He's going up against the Padres in Petco. Like, those are two very good things. Uh, it's pretty good weather for both pitchers, obviously, which you can't really say about some of these higher-priced guys. Um, Padres, one of the lowest on-base percentages against lefties this year. Anderson is probably my favorite value on the slate. It's a good it. run total. Um, man, I, so I love Anderson. I like Lucchesi, another guy that's been just pretty good at missing bats. He's 17th in wisp per swing, 11.3% swinging strike rate. Uh, he does struggle with walks a little bit, but he can put together a nice start here against the Rockies. The Rockies strike out near 26% of the time against lefties this year. So... On DK, I could see just locking in these two guys if I can't get to Corbin and just hoping for a 2-1 a game type of thing where both guys go 6-7 innings. Yeah, Padres, fifth highest K rate against lefties, Rockies, sixth. So yeah. uh, we could see oh, potentially a lot of Ks here. I don't expect either of them to catch like a ton of ownership. They're just not those kind of guys, but you know, maybe maybe that will happen when, all, when everything uh, comes out, but... I'd be fine with either one of them. Um, I think it's a really nice spot for both, as evidenced by the 3.4 run implied total on both sides. Uh, not expecting a ton of offense here. I won't have the hitters in this game on either side. Um, this is basically a stay away game for me from a hitting perspective. Yeah, you can talk me into Arenado against a lefty in pretty much any park. Sure. He's not a Coors baby. He's not like... Like, his numbers are inflated because of Coors, but that's not why he's one of the best players in the MLB. Right. Uh, he's just a legitimately awesome hitter. And against the lefty, Lucchesi, he's really the only guy that I want to target in this game. But he is 5,100. So, yeah. Healthy um, price point. Yeah. You're going to pay for it. Yeah. I don't, I don't have much interest in, uh, in the hitting here. Yeah. Final game. Giants and Reds. Giants, 4.2 run implied total. Reds, 3.8. 55% chance to win for the Giants. Uh, Chris, Stratton, who, Chris <coughs> Stratton going for San Francisco. Sal Romano uh, going for Cincinnati. I like Stratton quite a bit here. Um, 3.8 run implied total. Not too shabby for the Reds. Uh, Stratton's price point, 6,000 on FanDuel. There's only three guys below him. Uh got a really nice $5,700 price point on DK. Uh, he just feels like a really solid option against Cincinnati at a, you know, starting pitcher two price. So nothing, nobody that I want to let go wild about, but definitely a guy that I would consider as my second starter at that price point. <clears throat> yeah, Ugh, man, I can't do it with Stratton. So People were talking about, I don't know if they were joking on Twitter last night, but like some people in the industry were saying this is going to be Sal Romano day. Um, that's not, like he's not going to get ownership here, right? Uh, I mean, he, he did have a good start against the Mets in his last start, so I'm hoping people are on Romano. 
six innings, seven Ks against the Mets. Who I think do you that was. Follow on Twitter, Jesus. I don't, I don't want to name names because it was probably a joke, but uh, like whatever. The Giants are a good team to target uh, in AT and T. Like, I get it, but Romano just cannot like miss any bats. He's got an under five percent swinging strike rate. Um, I think he's got the second lowest whisper swing in the entire MLB. Uh, yep, second lowest, 719 pitches. He 12% whisper swing. Um, so give me McCutcheon, give me Buster Posey. Um, even in a bad pitter, hitter's park, like, no respect for Romano. He's got a 5.06 xFIP on the year, 26 Ks in 42 innings, 17 walks. He's got a one and a half home run per nine. He's uh, not good. And he's been lucky. His bad bip is 238. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, yeah, if it's Sal Romano day, um, I'm not going to have Sal Romano. It's, it's probably not going to be. I mean, like, 4.4 .4 run total is going to be enough to get a lot of people off of Romano if they were even considering it. It's just the prices for these guys are so, so cheap that I think people will talk themselves into Stratton and or Romano. Um, I get the Stratton play, but he's another guy that he doesn't miss a lot of bats for me. Um, so I'd rather target against him than play him here. I just love Anderson and Lucchesi a lot more. I'd rather pay up and not worry about having to play Stratton um, I agree he's giving up a way. he's giving up a bunch of hard contact to righties and lefties, and so I think Stratton's been pretty lucky. So I want to target him with like Eugenio Suarez, forty three hundred, crushing everything this year. Vado, Shebler, three guys that I really really like, uh, even in a bad park. Okay, I I'll, I will likely be over the field on Stratton on DK tonight. Uh, yeah. Just because of that price point, he's just really easy to work in at 5,700. And, you know, if we have, I don't know, let's say his ownership is at 5%, I'll probably end up with 8, 9, somewhere in that neighborhood. And on FanDuel? On DK. Or DK. I'm playing both oh, sides I, now. I, I think he'll be way more than 5% on DK. It's just because, so. yeah. I like, guess there's no. It is only an 8 game yeah. slate. Like I'd rather have Gara over him for a similar price on DK. I yeah, just I can't. Have Stratton. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. I mean, I certainly cannot do it with one lineup. Put my faith in Chris no, Stratton. No, I would not be putting my faith in Chris <laughs> Stratton in one line. That's for sure. Um. Yeah. So if he's gonna be chalky, he's a guy that I have no interest in. But if he's gonna be, whatever, like under ten percent, then I get it. Now I just want to see ownership. I live for I seeing that stuff come out. When does it usually drop? I I always check it like before the live stream, but hopefully. I'd have to look at the Slack channel. It's the only time I ever know when things come out. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm not gonna be able to scroll back to Friday to figure out when that happened. Hopefully Sorry. soon. <laughs> All right, I got some crunches done. Um, let's take a look and see. Give me two pictures on DraftKings. Let's try my two mid-tier boys, Anderson and Lucchesi. Okay. Yeah, they come up in quite a bit of lines. So you can do Anderson and Lucchesi with Indians, Brewers, Ooh, yeah. with a one-off Dozier. Lots of one-off Dozier in this scenario. Uh, Indian Diamondbacks with a one-off Dozier. Um, Man, I like that, yeah. Astros, Mariners, or Astros, yeah, Astros, Mariners with a one-off Ryan Braun. That's nice. Yeah, uh, you can definitely get whatever hitting you really need. Red Sox yeah. and Rays with Dozier is an interesting allotment that I don't think a lot of people would have. I think the Rays will be popular with Carrasco and um, Corbin. Yeah. Like one of those two, and then you go with like a mid tier option just because you can fit them in on DK. So maybe the Rays will be a little bit more owned than we think. You can do a Carrasco McCullers line with some stepped on versions of stats. <clears throat> yeah. 
lots of options here. Um, it's going to be really easy to get to whatever you want today with stacks like the Rays being such an incredible bargain. And then yeah. guys like Anderson, Lucchesi, you know, like I said, Stratton. Um, like it, there's just there's enough value in the middle tier of pitching that you should be fine to find stacks that you like. Yep. Uh, on FanDuel, it's going to be, you know, mostly Carrasco. Whoops. Mostly Carrasco, McCullers, and uh, apparently I hit the extra buttons on the side of my mouse that I don't ever use. It's good to know that uh, it means go back and go forward. I didn't know that, so I might start using those. Um, Carrasco, McCullers, and Corbin making up most of my ownership. Like on FanDuel, I got 8% Chris Stratton. I think that's right around where I would want to be. I think he's worth a flyer at that price. Uh, my main focus would probably be McCullers right now just because of my nervousness of Indians weather. Like if I had to put a lineup in immediately, I wouldn't focus on Carrasco just because of the rain. Um, but that allows me to get high-end Astros bats, Brewers bats, high-end Indians, Mariners stacks, um, I'm going to have a lot of ownership on Tampa, Houston, the Brewers. Uh, Indians. I mean, I'm, yeah, and the Indians. But yeah. The Indians are going to scare the shit out of me, though, so. Oh, know. no. If, From a weather if that game, Yeah, if that game looks like it's going to be okay, or even kind of okay, I'm taking the chance with the Indians and hoping people get off of it because of the weather. Um, they're my favorite stack of the night. Oh, me too. By by like, leaps and bounds. Yeah. So, hope hopefully the weather scares some people off. Yeah, that I'd be okay with that. Like I can get some McCullers with Indians Diamondbacks getting Peralta, Descalso, Souza, and Goldschmidt, Kipnis, Lindor, Brantley, and Alonzo. Like I'm just wow. I can see that lineup being gigantic. Yeah. All righty, that's all I've got. Uh, anything interesting in hockey tonight? Just another one-game slate. Yeah. Uh, if you guys aren't tired of playing yet, I'll have a showdown article discussing a stack and a few skaters that I'm targeting. Uh, I might try to multi-enter tonight. It might be the way to go with um, with how these showdown slates kind of go. So trying something different tonight. And, um, yeah, read that and look for the spotlight pitchers. I know you've got the spotlight hitters and stacks out already, right? I do. I do. Um, spotlight hitters and stacks are out. Uh, uh, only one basketball game tonight. Warriors Rockets. That should be what everyone's Ooh. watching. That's a biggie. Yeah, I like that. Um, keep an eye out for a playline article today. Uh, we've talked a lot about how you should set up um, your playline projections when we're running any playline contest. Uh, we're going to do the opposite for this article. We're taking a look back at the ownerships for. Um, for Jane, I think it's James Harden, but the ownerships from our last uh, our last contest. So checking out the distribution of points, rebounds, and assists that people took to see if there's any inefficiencies um, in the way that people are picking their lines. So really interesting stuff, in my opinion. Uh, I'm not just saying that because I wrote it. So <laughs> check that stuff out. I don't have anything else. This is just going to be a fun slate. Come to the live stream tonight at six. Uh, myself and Chris. We'll be going over these eight games and probably touching a little bit on that Warriors Rockets game. Yeah. That's all I got. Good luck, guys. All right. Best of luck, everybody. We'll talk to you tomorrow.